Hi folks, Jack Spirico here. Uh, I'm going to do another video for you guys in the Permaculture Series. Another one on swales because it just seems to me that like swales seem to be the one thing that a lot of people struggle with the overall concept. And because of the way drawings are done and what people say, I can see how some people that maybe haven't actually built them uh, would come to some misunderstandings. So I'm going to kill some misunderstandings on swales and I want to help you guys um, better understand what's going on and the hydrology, in other words, the way the water's working, and I think that will uh, unconfuse a lot of people. So let's start out with um, down here. This is my crude rendered drawing of a concrete water tank, and I want you to pretend this thing is a hundred feet long, and I got a faucet putting water into this tank over here, and a hundred feet away on the other end I have a penetration and a pipe, and that pipe lets water out of the tank. It's about a foot below the top of the tank. If I have a valve on that pipe, and I open that valve and water starts to flow out of this pipe, the water level will never get higher than this pipe, because it doesn't matter that the water's coming in over here and going over here. The whole tank fills, fills uniformly, assuming this is level. And that's the big thing. Everything you're going to see today is based on level, and level is absolute. It's not, there's no such thing as pretty level or close to level or almost level. It's level or it's not. And for swales to function the way they're supposed to, the way I'm going to describe you, they must be 100% level. And uh, so but you guys get that. Now, a little bit more on the hydrology to kind of get your head around how the whole thing works and functions. If I have a really big pipe over here, the water can only go out as fast as it's coming in once it reaches its, its level point. Right? So if I put a big pipe on there and I open the valve, the water just kind of dumps out. Right? But if I put a smaller pipe on there and I turn the faucet and open it up, the water shoots out. Because if we constrict the same volume of water to a smaller level, the pressure goes up. And pressure's bad in earthworks. We don't want pressure. We want to alleviate pressure. That reduces, eliminates, kills, destroys erosion. So swales are not designed to act like a dam that has a big heavy overflow to be used for like hydroelectric. They're, they're designed to pacify the water as, 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 as much as possible. So we want our pipe in effect, when we get to it, to be a really big pipe that lets a lot of water out over, a, a little water out over a wide area versus a little bit of water or a lot of water out a small area. All right, so that's lesson one. Lesson two today, let's look at an actual swell and see how it works. I sort of did this in another video, but I can tell there's still some confusion about it based on comments, questions on my podcast, and things like that. So I've tried to do something to make this a little easier to understand because I think people struggle when we draw a swell and it's on like a slope like this. A swell can be on, it will look flat to your eyes, but when you go out there with a level, you'll find there's, there's contours in the land. So I've made this as... as, as as close to not slanted as possible where you still get the idea, this is the high side, this is the low side. So somebody just asked me recently, Jack, well, when you take the dirt out and you put it here, doesn't this become the high side? Because this is higher than this. If we drew a line across right here from the top of this, back this way, staying level, well, I mean, you can see it goes all the way back. It's definitely higher here. That's not the point, though. This has nothing to do with holding the water in. This is not your water containment system. This is where one place we put water into. It's a place where we can grow a tree. We can grow a little tree right up out of there, right? We can grow our plants and trees in there, and they'll get a lot of moisture. But this isn't what's holding the water in. The, sil the swale itself is. In other words, when we dig this dirt out, we excavate this dirt, we put it down on this side. Another thing I try to do to help you get this is you notice that the, 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 the berm slopes downward. It's not a direct mirror image. Like It's, it's not going to be super high if I don't want it to be. I could, I could make it even lower and tail it out further. It's all up to me based on what I want to accomplish. But what's actually happening is the water's collecting in the swale just like it is here. It's filling up like this. But unlike this tank, this bottom of this swale, and we're looking at, if we're looking at a big swale here, we got about six feet by three feet deep. And it doesn't look that big when you stand and look at it. it you know, you think three feet deep, you're talking about something that's up to about here on me. It doesn't, it doesn't look that big because it's spread out. All right? But that water starts to fill up in there. Now, that water will not fill up like this. It's going to fill up level. So it will always be lower on this side than this side. In theory, the water should be able to fill up right to the top and eventually pour over. 
But that's not what's going to happen. We're going to set a line, just like here, of where that water can fill to capacity at. And when that water hits that line, it takes an awful lot of rain, an awful lot, to get it to go up above that if it ever happens. That's because we have a sill. Now that's where we're here. Now this image, and again, I'm not a great drawer, but I'm standing, if, I was, if you're looking at this, you'd be standing over here, right? And you're looking this way. And you're seeing the front of this mound. So now we're looking at the front of this mound. The ditch is back here. The water's all down here. All right? That black line at the bottom, that's, that's this line right here that's up underneath. That's, that's the level front of the, of the swale. And you see that and you think, well, the water's being held back by this berm. It's not. Right? It'll never get up there. It'll never get up there. I'm going to pause and we're going to go to part two. So as I was saying, the water level will never rise up to here. That would be a dam. If we had a dam, we might say, okay, I want to create freeboard. So that means I don't want my dam ever to go over. So I would impound it so that maybe this would be as high as my water would be held in by a lake, if this was a lake instead. And then that, come back level somewhere back here. And this whole thing would flood up with water. That's not what we're doing. We're just holding water in a ditch and trying to get it to go nowhere except in, down into, the, uh, into Mother Earth, so to speak. So the way we accomplish setting this level is at the end of our swale, if we have a really big system, we might even do this on both ends of it. If we have a huge system, we might do it somewhere in the middle in both ends of it. It's, it's all dependent on what our needs are. But at some point, we stop putting this dirt down. It ends. People look at that and say, well, that's how the water gets out. It's not that simple. It's, it's actually more simple. The only reason we're not putting the dirt there is so it doesn't get in the way of the water that is going to get out. Here's what I mean by that. At the end of this, this formation, the ditch continues, but the, the mounting ceases, and we come in here and we push this down. So this is flat, dead level, but it's about, let's say, 10 centimeters or about 2 inches lower than that. You see how that jogs down there? That's where the water comes out. And it doesn't matter if this is 100 feet or 1,000 feet or 5,000 feet long, it's going to fill even just like this tank down here. This swell will fill even and it will, it will have its height limited based on the sill unless we get so much rain, such a huge watershed event, that it exceeds the capacity of the sill. We have to think about this when we design. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes we might have two sills. Sometimes in a big system, we might have three. And how big is the sill? Generally, we want about two meters wide, six feet. Maybe if it's a really big system, we go nine meters wide, nine yards, you know, in, in American uh, in mathematical terms, I guess, right? So that's how this all works. And the important thing to understand is this water is never designed to come in direct contact with this berm. If it does happen, here's the interesting thing. Let's say that I start putting water in here really fast, really fast, faster than it can come out over there. The water level starts to rise. Eventually it gets to the top. Is the water going to pour out here? Or is it going to pour out here? Or is it going to like stream out, like just careen over? Think about filling a glass of water. When you fill a glass of water and it starts to overflow, it just, it, it just comes out like a sheet all around evenly. So that's what it's going to do here. That's what it'll do here. The water will begin to exceed its capacity equally across the entire length of the swale, which means we've got a huge pipe with no pressure. So the water just starts to weep into here, and it starts to seep into this mound. And if it ever does find a weak spot, if it ever does break one of your mounts, it won't be like a dam. It won't go boosh. It'll just kind of cave in. Something you can fix with a wheelbarrow and a couple hand shovels. That's what's so amazing about swells. They're easy to repair if they do fail. As long as you follow the rules, you've got to have that sill. But this is how it works. It, it, people look at this and they struggle with it because, you know, yeah, that's higher or it looks like it's obstructing the water. What's actually obstructing the water is, is here. And again, you have to understand that's going to fill level. Here's a great way to understand this. Just for a final thing. If I fill this pot with water, and if I'm you know, skilled enough, I can hold it dead level, and I'd have dead level water. 
But if I turn it like this, no matter how bad I am at holding a level, the, the top of the water, the surface of the water, is going to be level. And every time I move it, that water is going to find level on its own. That's what happens in a swale. It's going to find level, unless you make it off level, and then you're going to get a ditch that moves water, and then you're going to get erosion, and then you're going to get problems. But if you build them this way, you put the water into the land, you hydrate the landscape, and eventually you end up holding way more water in here, under the surface, than you could ever hold in a dam like this. And this water is subject to 100% evaporation, whereas this water, since it's in the ground, it takes a lot longer for evaporation to do its damage and deplete it. So this is kind of my, uh, my final thing for a while now in the series on swales. I hope it clears up some confusion.